Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Uh, China. There hasn't been much real obvious activity. I'd say the one thing that got a lot of people's attention where, uh, was where China threw, flew approximately two dozen uh, nuclear capable bombers into the Taiwan airspace. Uh, in one sense, this is them showing off again. In another sense, it's them still continuing to prepare for war. Just saying. Brazil, that's still kind of up in the air. They're trying to resolve the conflict. What the military is trying to decide what they're going to do about the corrupt judicial system. Maybe in the next week or so we'll see a significant move. We don't know. Last week I reported that the um, that Bill Gates and others had yet again done another uh, pandemic simulation called the Contagious Contagion that was uh, broadcast, uh, I don't know if it was broadcast, in any event they ran it. The premise was that there would be an outbreak of an enterovirus in Brazil that would primarily kill children and find its way to the Philippines. So they're sitting there figuring out what to do about it. Well, guess what? The World Economic Forum is getting together and any guess what the major theme is for the World Economic Forum? That's right, preparing for the next pandemic. What do you know? Now, you know, Elon Musk has been stirring up the pot a little bit. He put up this um, poll asking people whether or not he should, uh, whether or not the uh, people uh, felt that he should uh, step down or not. Uh, according to the last report, 57% said, Elon, you need to go. That's fine, except there's just one little problem that hasn't been answered. How many of those votes were by bots? Okay, so the argument is that this is a little bit of a, if you will, scam where uh, Elon is trolling or chumming for bots. So let's see what they come out with in the next couple of days on that. Now, the other thing that's kind of shocking here is you have the Federal Reserve of the Bank of Philadelphia coming out with a report. And in a way, we shouldn't be shocked. I mean, a lot of us are cynical about these uh, job reports as it is. This is a bit much. They indicated that the numbers for employment data in 2022 were, quote, vastly overstated. Employment, one million jobs higher than it really is. Okay, so um, I'm guilty. I didn't get the total numbers. But it should be clear that this is a significant shift in terms of what the picture would look like for unemployment. In other words, unemployment would be substantially higher than the, what, 3.4, 3.6% that they've been talking about recently. Uh, but this just underscores the fact that the government uh, constantly manipulates this data anyway, so you can never believe them. But just had to share it with you. The Ukrainian embassy in D.C. decided to have a little party. Well, this was the party that kind of told the story. This is the part that said the quiet part out loud. So I'll just show you the uh, invitation here. Uh, it was an invitation to celebrate the 31st anniversary of the founding of Ukraine, or at least liberation from the Soviets. And it was for the country's armed services. So if it was for the country's armed services, should we be surprised that the major sponsor was America's leading arms manufacturers? That's right, north of Grumman, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin. Oh, there's one that's missing, but anyway, that's, that's the invitation. So you get a sense of it, right? And uh, yeah, so it just, so the, the, uh, the takeaway quote is that some $50 billion in U.S. weapons uh, were bought by Ukraine and its ally and other countries last year. So there's more coming. And with that, I'm just going to quote um, Eisenhower in his uh, farewell speech when he said the following, in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and it will persist. Well, we see it on full display here with what's going on in Ukraine. Lamont's power rape, okay? Where is it there? Yep, Lamont's power rape. Um, so here's the, uh, here's the thing that's really amazing. All right, we know that um, Eversource is going to increase the uh, cost of power 100%. This is unprecedented. Whoever heard of such a thing? But as of January 1st, if you're still on Eversource, instead of paying, what, 14 cents a kilowatt hour, you're going to be paying 28, 26 cents a kilowatt hour. That's outrageous. 
and it's going to really be a shock to people's power bills. But here's the real problem. Um, just a quote, about 2,000 Eversource customers were surprised again upon learning they had been blocked, blocked, when trying to switch to a lower cost generator such as Constellation Energy or North American Power. Blocked. These are people, I mean, but here's what's stupid about this. You had people complaining who had never been a hardship case. People who had always paid their bills, always paid their taxes. Yet somehow these people were being put on this list, this hardship list that said you can't switch. So why is it you can't switch if you're a hardship case? This makes no sense. Well, I think it's no sense unless you could figure out that Eversource is trying to take, take as much money as it can from people. And where's Lamont in all this? Who knows? Hell yeah, we indoctrinate. Hell yeah. So educator brags about indoctrinating kids and then complains about the right wing reporting on it. Now, you can't really see this young woman here in this picture, but in color, her hair is purple. Now, you remember the other one who said that English grammar is racist, her hair was sort of a weird kind of pinkish reddish color. What's the matter with these people? I just, wow. Anyway, her name is Heather Marie Godbout, and she's a member of what's called the school's equity team, an equity team. And of course, like any wackadoodle liberal, she loves to uh, think of us in terms of right-wing conspiracies. So she defends her actions by suggesting that she actually teaches critical thinking. Well, we could actually have an interesting discussion ab about that Ms. Godbout, about just what constitutes critical thinking, as well as uh, what constitutes knowledge and a proper education. Sure, Georgia continues to be the worst when it comes to election fraud, all right? And I'll just pull one quote from this article. Raffensperger had three independent assessments of the election activities in the state presented to him after the election in 2020, and he ignored all three. So there's this other article I was looking at. Eh, I don't think it's here. The title of the article is Tyranny by Omission, right? Now, tyranny by omission becomes a funny concept, right? We stand here and say, why isn't the government doing something about this? This is obvious law breaking. This obviously violates the Constitution. This obviously violates various statutes, yet nothing is being done. Tyranny by omission. And Mr. Raffensperger is guilty of the same crime. Pope Francis has decided to quote defrock Father Frank Pavone because he has been intimately involved for decades in fighting abortion. And believe it or not, within the four walls of the Catholic Church, there were people who felt that he shouldn't be doing this. And they kept trying to shut him up, and he wouldn't shut up. And so finally, they reached the point where they said, the only way we're going to solve this problem is to kick him out. So that was the uh, move that's been made. So, um, yeah, I just thought that this was interesting. One salient quote, since Priests for Life is not a Catholic organization, Mr. Pavone's continuing role in it as a layperson would be entirely up to the leadership of that organization. So Mr. Pavone ain't going away. Just because he isn't wearing the uh, minister or priest white thing uh, doesn't mean that he isn't involved. You know, for people who have been following the court case that Naomi Wolf is bringing forth and the other court cases that are in process against the CDC and the FDA, as well as Pfizer, as well as Moderna, would see that there's a body of evidence that you have to deal with here, okay? And in studying that body of evidence, you know that there's another group of so-called officials who are doing everything they can to avoid this. That's right, tyranny by omission. Here we go again. So Asa Hutchinson, governor of Arkansas, tries to side with the establishment in this and totally ignore the fact that there is evidence to be considered. Mr. Hutchinson, you should be ashamed of yourself. Connecticut commie of the week is Barbara Vereen. So once again, she's an example of these people who end up in different lines of activity. Union organizer, labor activist, right? Uh, but in her case, she's also on the New Haven Fire Commission. So we've got the, uh, we've got the link up for that if you want to check it out. 
So you have a union organizer who's also a fire commissioner. I don't know. When it comes to negotiating contracts with the city, I'm detecting a conflict of interest there. But as usual, nobody has anything to say. Victor Davis Hanson uh, did a piece, 10 Steps to Save America. So I'm just going to quickly rattle them off for you. Cut the debt, secure the border, tap natural resources, oppose discrimination, disrupt and reform higher ed, which I find interesting, revive the armed forces, fix voting, drain the swamp, upend the welfare state, and restore norms. So uh, it's, a, it's a good sort of prescriptive list of things that we should be thinking about. And I guess that will do for now. So make sure you go to our website, check it out. We'll be out there. All right, thank you much.